So this is Ted Wilgus. Uh, he's from the uh, North Carolina Coastal Federation. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the work he's doing. Thank you, Ted. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much to uh, Oyster South and uh, Bill and Beth for letting us come to speak to you, and thank you for listening. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about um, what all the stakeholders here in North Carolina are doing with oysters um, and looking kind of comprehensively at some of the things that you all are, are talking about um, and just try to sort of share some of the things that, that we've learned, some of the successes, and also thank you all for a lot of the, the uh, input that you've given us in North Carolina from your lessons learned. Um, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Thank you. Um, so again, you know, we've all seen the ecosystem services slide. Um, what's kind of come to our attention here in North Carolina is that what's opening doors kind of in the current political climate with our North Carolina General Assembly are, are mainly the dollars and jobs. And so um, we were able to talk to our legislators with a lot more success, um, thanks to the growers who are coming up and saying, you know, I am growing this product, I'm generating income, I'm generating um, tax dollars, I'm generating jobs in our coastal counties, many of which are tier one low economic development areas. And so that's really helped us um, open doors and start some of the discussions that we're unable to open before. And again, many of you all have seen similar slides as this. Um, you know, these are happening across the region. Um, and North Carolina's kind of response to this initially was, you know, get more material in the water, look at the diseases, look at regulations, um, and that's kind of the approach. Um, and luckily we've got a division of marine fisheries that's been very proactive and willing to work with a lot of the stakeholders. And starting in the early 2000s, um, a lot of the um, groups, the stakeholders, ranging from growers to regulators to researchers to NGOs, started coming together and trying to look at all the different kind of strategies that were being employed out there, ranging from fishery management plans to regulations, to see if we could kind of pull out key aspects of those and sort of move them forward as one vehicle, um, looking to sort of try to address comprehensively how to restore oysters in the sense of restoring both the habitat as well as the fishery and the industry and the water quality. Um, and North Carolina just hadn't seen much of AmeriCulture growth, primarily due to um, some of the regulatory barriers that are out there. It was very hard and very expensive to get a lease in North Carolina. And so with the blueprint that um, came out in the early 2003 and has been kind of renewed every five years since then, is trying to basically look at all the aspects we need to have healthy oyster population and the resulting benefits from those. Looking at water quality, economics, you know, building sanctuaries, putting culture out for the wild harvest, um, management, and then growing the mariculture industry. Those are all the things we're trying to sort of track together so that they're linking and supporting each other as we go. And um, this is all stakeholder driven. Um, you know, the Coastal Federation, we're just kind of like the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain sometimes. Um, it's primarily all the stakeholders, the growers like you all that are out there, um, the agencies, the researchers, um, and we're just trying to sort of help kind of move the process along. And that's the only way it'll work. I mean, you see DOT there, the Chamber, Chambers of Commerce, the Department of Commerce, all those people have to be involved if we're gonna be able to grow our oysters and keep our water quality good enough for us to harvest and eat them. Um, in North Carolina, we've been <coughs> working on our sanctuaries, as is described earlier, up in the northern part of the state, growing those. We've also been doing extensive cults planting all across the region, um, trying to sort of get our um, bushels, um, bushel balance back up again, um, to try to keep up for the wild harvest, as well as restore some of the habitat benefits. Um, and now what we're seeing is the mariculture is growing. Um, previously, we had seen very few farms. Most of the farms were bottom leases. Um, and now we're starting to see increasing numbers of water column leases. We're seeing higher production levels and through the hard work of the growers. Um, but it's also been accompanied with kind of a regulatory change that's helped it um, make it easier versus um, very much as it used to be. It was very difficult to get that lease. Um, as part of that, um, we started, we uh, launched into what's called a Shelf Swiss Initiative, and it's, it's, it's a statewide model, but it's modeled after 
um, the National Shellfish Initiative that NOAA put out um, to basically increase the population of shellfish. Um, and it has four basic areas that we're focused on, job creation, protection of water quality, protection of shellfish health, and sustainable management. Um, and North Carolina was the sixth state to have a shellfish initiative. And it basically provides a, a vehicle to leverage kind of what we're doing already in the state, existing partnerships and grant programs to maximize the benefits of shellfish. And it ele elevates our work in North Carolina to a federal level to hopefully get more federal support for some of the work that's being done here in the state. Um, and it's a way to look at using shellfish as a way to help promote and maintain a really vibrant and healthy coastal communities. Um, and so that kind of kicked things off and we use sometimes the term the Napa Valley of Oysters. And I know some people may take offense at that thinking their state's the Napa Valley of Oysters. But where that came from was Rowan Jacobson, um, we invited him down to an oyster meeting in North Carolina and he had recently um, finished a book, The Geography of Oysters, and he traveled all across the area looking at um, oysters and really describing you know, how they reflect the area. And it was a beautiful book, but there was no chapter on North Carolina. Um, essentially, he skipped North Carolina, and a lot of us took offense. Um, and so uh, we invited him down to explain why. And you know, he just said there wasn't, there wasn't the growth. He said, but you all could be the Napa Valley of Oysters based on the water quality, the different types of water we have, um, the diversity. Um, so the opportunity is there, and that's kind of where that term came from, and a lot of people have sort of latched onto that as the potential that we could see. Um, and then, um, thanks again, a lot of support from the growers in North Carolina who worked hard to um, open doors of legislators and others um, to say, we need help, we need support. And so um, the General Assembly worked with what's called the UNC Collaboratory to support the um, strategic plan for shellfish, um, strategic plan for shellfish mariculture for North Carolina. Um, and we really want to thank a lot of you in this room and other states who helped sort of develop that plan by giving us your kind of lessons learned, things to avoid, what worked, what didn't work because we were able to learn a lot from what you all have already experienced. So we appreciate your support and your input and your guidance for this. Um, but it was a very much stakeholder driven process. And they came up with essentially 21 recommendations um, out of this mariculture plan that was just finalized last year. And it envisions uh, potentially a hundred million dollar industry for North Carolina, um, considering $33 million kind of farm gate value. And it, emphasizes supporting growers through crop insurance, low insurance, low interest loans, and disaster relief. Uh, Hurricane Florence, as many of you all know, was a disaster in North Carolina, and growers are still recovering from that, and so looking for ways to help growers um, withstand those kind of things. Um, looking at marketing and promoting, as you heard about the, with the, with the um, Oyster Trail in North Carolina, that's one tool. Looking at uh, doing a market analysis looking at working more with the, with the North Carolina Agricultural Consumer Relations Department. Regulatory, looking at providing more um, flexibility within our regulations, as well as giving um, leaseholders, growers, more of a voice in some of the um, Marine Fisheries Commission um, processes. Statutory changes, looking at things like shellfish enterprise areas, where um, the Division of Marine Fisheries will essentially designate an area, um, one acre, five acre, um, that they would actually get set up for leases and then people who are coming into the industry could essentially take over those leases for a certain number of years, learn, and then they would be able to go on and do their own farming as one tool. Um, and then finally supporting all the research through um, trying to increase the amount of money available through Sea Grant and other vehicles for um, industry research. And all this is based on basically seeing you know, kind of what's happening in North Carolina, the growth is, is explosive. It's very exciting for the shellfish growers. It's also a challenging time. You know, there's a lot of, as some of the panels have talked about, the NIMBYs, not in my backyard. Uh, there's a lot of conflicts. But again, from lessons learned from other states, we're trying to do the best we can, and the growth potential is huge. Um, the big concern, um, and sort of one of the things we've been talking a little bit about, is that what we're seeing is, you know, we're growing these oysters, but the coast is changing. 
We're seeing um, development, especially here in North Carolina, and I'm sure in your areas, um, very large changes in the hydro hydrology of the land, where it used to rain and the water was soaking to the ground, it now runs off. And what we're seeing are increasing areas of, of shellfish closures, especially here in the southern coast of North Carolina. Um, thank you. And one of the things we are trying to address is by doing watershed restoration plans. So you're looking at your really high quality growing areas where you have a lot of resource, a lot of potential for or the wild harvest as well as the, um, the oyster farmers and see if you can actually work on a watershed scale to reduce the amount of water coming into that um, growing area. And what we did is we looked at two creeks here in, um, in Wilmington area, Hewlett's Creek and Bradley Creek. We went back to 1981 and basically through modeling tried to figure out how much rain came off that land during a rainstorm based on how much of that watershed was developed with impervious surfaces. And that's what it looked like in 1981. And if you look at the hydrograph, we'll go through it's just a series of changes. And if you look at the red um, right down here, that's the closure line of the creek. And if you look at the hydrograph, as the hydrograph change, you'll see that closure line move out and get larger. So as the area develops more, you get more impervious surfaces, the hydrograph changes, you're getting a lot more water volume into the estuary, and that closure line moves out farther and farther. And so what we're trying to do is, can we, can we essentially reduce that area where we're starting to reduce the amount of volume of water going out of the, uh, off the land into these creeks and these growing areas? And so um, there's a lot of great tools out there. UNCW's created their, um, their benthic, um, the Benthic Lab, the um, oyster siting tool, which has been a huge help for a lot of growers coming in, as well as managers. And it allows you to look at you know, where the leases are, what are the status of the waters, are they closed, are they open, are they conditionally closed, conditionally open, um, to try to site your lease. And what we're trying to do is, at the same time we're working on you know, supporting growers, building reefs, we're also looking at these watershed restoration plans and trying to encourage people to look at ways to reduce stormwater so that we can have our oysters um, and good water quality as well. Um, and so there's a lot of different uh, projects out there ranging from municipalities to golf courses to homeowners where everyone's essentially trying to do their part. And one of the things that's brought together are oysters. Uh, sometimes you'll talk to somebody and their eyes will glaze over, you talk about water quality, but the minute you talk about an oyster, they get really excited. And so they realize that, hey, if I have a rain barrel on my property, I'm protecting the oyster I love to eat. So we range on different scales, but that's essentially what we're trying to do, again, through all these different stakeholders. And so my last slide is, you know, a lot of you all are aware of all the hard work that you put into your work. You know that it translates into jobs, it translates into money, it translates into ecosystem benefits from your farms. And what we're trying to do is take that and use that, have it open doors um, so that we can talk about other issues, ranging from regulatory to water quality, to getting more money into the system, to support growers, to support water quality benefits. But the biggest thing that helps us are the growers. The growers are there opening the doors, they're talking to um, regulators. When I, when I stand in front of a legislator, they're not as interested in me, but when they have a grower who's got you know, jobs, economy growing in their county, which doesn't have a lot of resources, they're very interested in talking to that grower. Um, and so the growers that are standing by us are huge allies in that. So I want to thank you for your efforts, but also encourage you, if you're not an advocate for clean water, um, there's a lot of ways you can be, and we'd certainly like you to reach out to the people that are trying to do this and, and support you, and, and if you can support them, it'll help us all. So thank you all very much.